Praise the Lord and thank you so much for tuning in and joining us at this program, Anointing. I'm Apostle Vincent Takosa of Christ Citadel International Church. We are one church in five places here in Los Angeles area and place if you're unchurched. Call the number on the screen and come and worship with us in any of our campuses. Amen. We want to thank you for taking the time to join us in fellowship. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Holy Father God, and thank you so much in Jesus' name for the awesome privilege of worship and fellowship as your people congregate, mighty God, through the blessing of television so that we'll be able to celebrate your awesomeness, your goodness to us as for it is the goodness of God that has opened this door for us, that has afforded us this privilege, this opportunity, mighty God, of declaring your name and declaring your word and the Spirit of God confirming it with signs and wonders as always according to the assurance and the blessing of failing promises and blessings in Mark chapter 16, verse 20. So, Lord, I confirm and affirm your word. Grant me, mighty God, in Jesus' name, clarity of speech and give your people, mighty God, the grace of receptive faculties. Let them hold and receive your word that will be a blessing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to look at the word of God in the book of Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3. We want to read from verse, verse um, 11 to 15. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel that the Lord, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. I think maybe if you are following the reading of this text, you can also see the play of words here. In verse 11, Moses was actually questioning his capacity to be able to execute this grand plan of God. A.T. an octogenarian, and all he has is this stick, a shepherd's stick or staff stick anyway. That God has sent him, commissioned him to go and stand before Pharaoh, the most powerful king in the then known world, with the most powerful weapon in the then known world, the unique polar power in the world. Egypt, there was no nation like Egypt. At that time, they have wealth, they have power, they have clout, they have the most powerful army, they have people of science and knowledge. Look at the things, the pyramids and the things that they were building. And you are sending this man to go and tell, just declare, let my people go. Praise God. It takes more than grace to be able to execute this plan. And nobody God just chose and nobody a man in them. In fact, when you even look at things critically, under the law, Moses was a fugitive in Egypt. He was a fugitive from justice. He was running away from Egyptian justice for the killing of someone. And he's got a chance by stroke of 
you know, luck that he escaped the hangman's news in Egypt. And now God is telling him, go back to the same people who are looking to kill you. At this time, <laughs> you are not just going, you know, in, in hiding. You are going to the seat of power to go and stand before Pharaoh. Who knew what you did and is looking for you? Go tell him. God says, let my people go. If I want to look at it from the human perspective, it is like sheer audacity. You have committed murder. You have run away. Now you come in here to tell me to let these people, these servants, these slaves, to let them go and worship your God. Hmm. It is indeed a hard sale. But only God can make it happen. And in many cases, it is, it's a reflection of our life and our walk. Every day we got confronted with challenges, humongous issues, way above our pay grade and our strength, our capacity and capability to endure or to handle. But God, say, but God. It is the goodness of God, the goodness of God according to Romans 2.4 that has done all this and brought us this far, brought me this far, brought you this far, and there is further place in the God. If he's been able to bring you this far, over and above your difficulties and challenges and your pain and your suffering and affliction, starting from a place where nobody ever gave you a chance, my brother, my sister, there is still hope in Christ for you. Have faith and believe him. But then God decided that the most powerful nation in the world with all the resources that one would need, wealth, military, might, I mean, talking about the most sophisticated weaponry at that time, they have it. Pharaoh has got everything at his back and call. And then God decide to use God's army of one. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, I'm talking about the army of one. God's army of one. An octogenarian with some rickety shepherd stuff says, I will use you to confront this great nation and you will overcome. You will prevail over them. Hallelujah. Sometimes God gives us some difficult challenges and assignments and I know as pastors, God will give you some challenge. You can, let us see the word of God. Genesis chapter Psalm 24, verse 1, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says in Isaiah 66, verse 1, The heavens is his throne, the earth is his full stool. Anyone who rules or governs any part in the world is under the feet of God. It doesn't matter who he is, and it doesn't matter who he worships. The Bible also says, in, 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 in Psalm 22, verse 28, that God is the governor of the nations. In fact, let us see Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13. The Bible says the nations are like dust. He carried the, 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 the nations in the basket. This is the God that we are talking about. And then he set one man, not a young man, not a military trained man, not a man who have done just an old man, an octogenarian, with a stick, a one man army. In the natural, he is weak. In the natural, he is frail. In the natural, he is old and decrepit. And no energy, no strength. In the natural, he has no power, no brute force. But yet the Bible says, according to the word of God in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 and 4, 
Yeah, we walk in the flesh that we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It does, it does, it, it does not matter the nature of the individual. What is most important is the content, the anointing upon that person. The person, the vessel may look old and decrepit and effect. But it is the anointing that is that resides in that person. That's in the Bible says we set along the eloquence. According to Ephesians, first John 4:4. 4, 4, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Did in Elisha's bones, a dead man, raise a dead person? Think of the anointing. Sometimes we think and worry about what we don't have, but we don't talk about what we have. Measure up what you have against what you don't have. Because what you have is going to give you what you don't have. By faith in God. So the point is this. This man, imagine appearing before Pharaoh and declaring this and the things he looked like a clown. Who will take you serious? And that is why many people don't take us serious. They don't take us serious. You are an army of one and they don't take you serious. But God takes you serious. People may not take you serious. God takes you serious. He takes your faith serious. He takes your prayer serious. He takes your work serious. He takes your, your declaration of his word serious. And God takes his mission and commission of you serious. I'm talking to you, man of God. I'm talking to you, woman of God. You think maybe, oh, well, you know, the church is falling apart and people are not coming and, and I'm going through all this and people are not taking me serious. God who called you and appointed you and assigned you at this time, God was just having what? A private discourse with Moses. Nobody was there. When God called you, who was standing there? Your mother, your father, your brother? Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. The apostle Paul said, when he pleased the Lord to separate me from my mother's womb, I do not consult with flesh and blood. When God was talking, to the, God sent the angel Gabriel to come and talk to Mary. Who was there? Was Joseph in the room? When God was speaking to Moses, who was there? It was just him. God called you alone. Nobody was there. He spoke to you alone. You heard his voice. You received the power of God to get up and do what God has assigned you to do. Did he tell you to be a fake work? Everything and anything God decides to do, get ready, the devil will put up resistance. But tell me, tell me, either from human history, who has been able to resist the will of the power of God? Who? Who has successfully started where well, I stood up against the will of God? I opposed him and I won. Anyone who, ran, who resists the will of God, you run the risk. You do so, you rule the rest. The, this, you do so on peril of your own death. In the end, Pharaoh and this whole army that was priding himself with, they fell into the sea. Have faith in God. And stop talking about how fragile you are, how frail you are, and how you don't have anybody. You have everybody because God is talking to you. He told Jeremiah, a 17 year old, God, Jeremiah 1 5, before I formed you, I knew you, and I've called you. Jeremiah said, I was young. He said, Don't say you are young. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's room. And then he said, I set you over kingdoms and nations to pull down and tear down. Do you know what your anointing is going to do? In Jeremiah 51, verse 24, he says, I made you into my, I made you my battle axe. With you, I destroy kings and kingdoms. Did he not even say in Psalm 105, verse 14, he rebuked kings for your sake? For your sake, he will rebuke kings. And yet he did. 
He rebuked Pharaoh in the days of Moses. In the days of Abraham, he rebuked King Abimelech. Return Sarah to her husband. He rebuked Nebuchadnezzar. For seven years, he made you chew grass like an animal. The most powerful king. He lived in the world, chewing grass. That is God. There is none before, there is none after. So Moses, yes, because nobody has ever attempted it. God, that is what God is taking you. God is taking you to a place that nobody has ever attempted it. A challenge that nobody has ever attempted it. A situation that nobody has ever attempted it. Diff challenges and battles that no one has attempted it. And that people know that you don't even have the strength, the knowledge, the know-how, and the wherewithal to overcome it. So that when it does happen, and the breakthrough comes, all oh, glory, like the prayer Jesus taught us, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Not a short period of time, not for the moment of the conquest. And some people in error say, oh, the miracles stop when the apostles, hey, did you read forever and ever? He's the ancient of days. He's not limited or reduced or diminished. Or constrained by time and space. His power transcends time and space continuum. That is my God. That is my God. So the Bible says, Moses, when I go, how should I introduce myself? These people have been in in bondage for years, vicious. They know that they know that they descended from Abraham, the friend of God. But there's this long hiatus of divine visitation and involvement, and it's like God has forsaken me, God has abandoned me. So they were living in this. What is going on? Where is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? In the sovereign God comes. This time says, I have heard a voice. Don't stop making noise. Isaiah 62 says, those who watch, keep watch over Jerusalem, we should keep praying. For Jerusalem's sake, do not keep quiet. Some people pray for two minutes, is God in here? Me. Keep making noise. Pray without ceasing. The sovereign God will intervene. So he said, well, when we go, people are in pain, people are in difficult. Do you show up and say, Moses, look at him, 80 years old, who will accept you? But when we go, I'm not coming in my name. Hallelujah. We don't come in our name because people think they know us. Oh, you are the son of Joseph. Oh, you are the carpenter's son. We're, no, the Bible says, bless in the name who come in the name of the Lord. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We don't come in our name. We come in the name that is above every other name. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. That's how has, far has God given him a name above every and any other name. Ephesians 1, 22, 23. That the name that is above every name that is named. A name that are yet to be named. He said, when you go, tell them, I am has sent me. Who I am. Verse 11, Moses was saying, I am not able, who am I? Now you see the word play. I know, God is saying, that is what we say. Anytime we say, God, I can't, God, we are telling him, who am I? I have said it to me every day. I say, God, <laughs> who am I? But he says, I am. My inadequacies makes way for his sufficiency, for his all sufficiency, for the display of his power. For the Bible says, Philippians 2, 13, it is God who works in us both to will and to act. So he said, most Pharaoh, I raise you up to display my power. I am a 
sentiment. The be all and the end all. First Kings 9, Solomon prays that the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. The one who fills all and is in all. From 1 to 9, David said, where will I go that you will not be there? When I climb to, I will take up the wings of the morning and fly to the highest heavens. You are there as omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. If I go to the depth, to the bowels of hell, you are there. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. You are everywhere. Your name works everywhere. In the hospital room, in the jail cell, on death row, the one who is dying, the one who is in debt, everywhere your name, where you are, the I am. And we are too blessed and privileged that through Christ Jesus, we get a chance to call you Abba Father. Abba Father. For the word says, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. My brothers and sisters, as I wind up, Romans chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. For anyone who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon the Savior's name. Stop pouting, stop complaining, stop whining, stop murmuring. Call upon the name. For the battle says, Moses was just a figurehead. We are just figureheads. We are vessels of honor. It is an honor for us to come do, but the work is done by him. He does the work. All we have to do is show up. We don't have to be like the children of the, 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 the Ephraim who were armed to war and then they saw the enemy in that tail. The presence of God go do 2020. The Lord is the one who fights for us. The battle is always said, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 16. He fights and wins for us. Declare his name. Because he has given the name as a gift. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess, every in heaven on earth and believe. But the Bible says, these signs will follow us. We who declare his name. May God, I declare his name over your situation, over your marriage, over your health issues, over your finances, over your ministry, brother, my brother, my sister, don't give up. Don't give the devil a chief win, victory. The ministry will never go down. If everybody has left, God hasn't left you. Stay put, dug in, stand firm, and you will see the glory of God. May the Lord strengthen you and give you peace. May you, he manifest his glory upon your life. I pray that every need of yours, I declare that the great I am will perform a miracle. May he send anointing your way. To bless you, encourage and strengthen you in Jesus' name. Never give him, never give the devil an easy victory. By your lack of faith, may God increase and strengthen your faith in Jesus' name. Amen. I bless you, my brother, my sister. Amen. Until next week, this is the anointing and Apostle Vincent Akosa. Please, if you're on church, looking for a home church, call the number on the screen and come and worship with us. Till next week, it's the anointing. Stay blessed.